welcome you all to the first class on defects in materials. In the earlier class, I had given a brief introduction about the syllabus which is going to be followed for th this course and what exactly will be covered in this particular course. Okay. As I mentioned in that class, the first thing which one has to understand is that we are but the title itself means that we are studying defects in materials and mostly we are talking about crystalline materials. If you wanted to study defects in crystalline material, okay, first we should have a reference standard which is a material which does not contain any defect. That is the first criterion which we have to meet it. So what we should know is how to generate a perfect material or a perfect crystal which does not contain any defects or it is an ideal crystal. Okay. This ideal crystal can be generated okay, by looking into International Union of Crystallography table which is available. From that, if we know the space group of a particular crystal, then we can look at it and then try to generate the crystal structure. But if we have to do that, what is the criterion which first we should know how this uh, table itself is generated, what are the important significance of it, only then we can understand and then utilize it in the best way, right. Okay. So this is what will be covered in basically in a lecture which we call it as generally we call this field as crystallography. So crystallography studies okay, the arrangement of groups of atoms or molecules of mortent or patterns in a periodic way okay, in one, two or three dimensions. Okay. But what we will talk about it is that in generally in crystallography this is also called as geometric crystallography. The reason essentially is that suppose an element is there, what is the way in which it is going to, which crystal structure it is going to form? That information we can't get it from a geometric crystallography. But geometric crystallography tells what are the options which are available for it. If it has to form a crystal, what are the crystal structures to which it can form? Okay. Only those in So geometrical crystallography is nothing but a sort of a probability of looking at what are the structures which we can form. This comes on the basis of what is the type of symmetry which is associated with the different type of crystals. So what are the possible type of arrangements which we can have? That is what we talk about in this geometrical crystallography. Let us look in some patterns in one dimension, two dimension, okay. See what we can understand from this, okay. So though we wanted to construct crystals in three dimensions, it is better to start from because there are some crystals which are there in one dimension also, one dimensional periodicity. There are like if you look at surface of a material, surface of a material, a surface of a material is a two dimensional crystal, then bulk crystal is a three dimensional crystal. So it is important and uh, in our interest to know what all types of periodicity exist in all these three dimensions. Okay. Let us just look at this pattern. When we look at this pattern, okay, can you make out uh, whether any periodicity is there in the first pattern? What do you see? Yes, yes, there is some periodicity is there. Okay. So some pattern is getting generated. Okay. Is there and that pattern repeats itself. Correct. In the second one and the third one, if you look at it, in the second one it is very easy to make out that what is the pattern. But in the first one, it is a little bit uh, difficult. The third one, if you look at it, the type of pattern which is getting repeated is not one because like here it is a, uh, this is the motif which is getting repeated or the pattern which gets repeated. In this particular design, there is only one which is getting repeated. Okay. So that means that the pattern which repeats itself, we call it as the motif. So this is the motif in these two cases. These are asymmetric motifs. When we say something is asymmetric, that means that there is no symmetry which is associated with that motif. Correct? Now if you look at the second one, 
the motive which repeats okay that motive itself has got some symmetry associated with it so what we can have is that motive itself can have a symmetry or the motive itself can be there without any symmetry which is called as an asymmetric motive okay using an asymmetric motive using some symmetry operations we will come to know later that different types of motives could be generated okay now let us look at this pattern it's a pattern in two dimension this design if you look at it the first one is taken from a, uh, a wallpaper uh, design okay packing paper design here if you look at it the pattern which generates or the pattern which repeats itself is essentially the one which is shown in that white square okay how is it getting repeated by keeping one on top of the each other okay we can generate it it looks like a square pattern this is one which is taken from a cloth here again you can say that this is the one which is a motive which is getting repeated again and again okay in both the cases what we have is a square type of pattern but the motives are two different types of motives so it looks like uh, two different types of a design so in nature if we look at it even when we look at various types of uh, designs but when we look at it for especially if we take with this example itself that though different types of designs we can see the what is getting repeated is many of them are common now the question which arises is that is there any restriction or how many types of uh, 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 periodicity which we can have in one two and three dimension that is the information which we require okay so just suppose we have to represent this uh, pattern which is getting repeated how can we go about and do it okay because the pattern itself are different designs are uh, if you look at it is an asymmetric pattern in this particular case it is a uh, pattern which is very complicated the best way to represent it is if you wanted to look at periodically and uh, to look at the periodicity and work on it the best thing to do is to represent it by some point so that is what we have done is represented with a point correct this is the point which repeats itself this point could have been placed anywhere it doesn't matter but it will show the same and if you place at particular point at this corner everywhere it should be placed as that particular corner that is how the lattice has to be generated now we can look at the periodicity of the lattice because that is much easier because we have removed the pattern okay once the pattern has been removed we can very well see only the what is getting repeated okay and when we look at this periodicity and when we look at the uh periodicity in the pattern one thing which you have to if two dimensions are three dimensions we have to use a coordinate system to represent the axis uh, axis so the convention which is followed in crystallography okay i thought that right at the first instance one should understand how what is the international convention which is being followed in the books on crystallography if we prefer the, if we follow that convention it becomes much easier to understand the books okay so what essentially is done is that from top to bottom okay is how the x axis is defined okay y axis is from left to right and z axis is coming out of the uh, screen okay this is the convention which is being followed to represent the uh, uh, origin okay and the different axis now if you look at it when the pattern gets repeated what is the shortest uh, vector which is uh, getting repeated okay that is from one lattice point to another lattice point and this is the distance which it is getting repeated so if we represent it by a, a vector a so this is the lattice parameter correct so the pattern which is getting repeated is what we call it as the motif okay the motive could be asymmetric or it could be some symmetric motive okay so motive itself could have a symmetry we'll come to about symmetry little bit later okay and this motive could be essentially in an art form it is a pattern in uh, solid state physics if you look at it we look at position of atoms okay 
single atoms are groups of atoms. Then in uh, chemistry, if you look at it, we uh, talk about molecules, okay, various types of molecules. The molecules itself will have some symmetry associated with it, right? Okay. Uh, then this motif gets repeated, okay. Or the motif which is getting repeated, we, when we represent it by a point, we call it as a lattice point, okay. What is the periodicity which is underlying this uh, lattice? Okay, is what is described by the lattice. Okay, in the pattern, what is the periodicity which is getting repeated? That we can show it. Okay, by essentially uh, the lattice. Then lattice point generally we assume to have zero dimensions and infinite symmetry associated with it, and lattice is supposed to be infinite in all diamond, uh, directions. Okay. So, surface effects do not come in the lattice, but in real crystals always that will be there. Surface effects are very important. Okay. And the shortest translation vector okay, in uh, different uh, uh, coordinate axis directions, we call them as the lattice parameter. Okay. Now, from this what we can understand? The when the pattern which is there, uh, which is getting repeated, okay, we can call it as a design. That is the terminology which I am using it, okay. In crystallography, we will call it as a some crystal, okay. The crystal itself, when we are trying to represent it, we have a lattice and around each lattice point, we have a motif which is been put around it. So, lattice plus a motif is what a crystal is, okay. In some books, you will find that instead of motif, the terminology basis will be used, okay. And it can be represented by a vector, okay, r equal to u into a, it is written. a is the shortest, uh, lattice translation vector, okay. u is the number of times it gets repeated to reach a particular lattice point. This is in one, di one, one dimension. Similarly, we can write it for two dimensions as well as three dimensions, okay. What I had given here is that instead of a pattern which is an art form, we can use some symbols also. Like generally in books if you will find, they will use a letter like P or R to represent an asymmetric motif. Okay. In this case I had used P and I can represent it P by a lattice point at some dot and this repeats itself. This is one way to look at it. Another if you look at it, there are two types of asymmetric motifs are getting repeated in the next one, next crystal structure which I had considered P and R, okay. But these two are two asymmetric ones, they are close each other, but if you look at it, you do not see any symmetry between them in the motif. The next one is one where I have a P and an inversion of, uh, the, not an inversion, a mirror of P is also there, okay. These together constitutes a motif that repeats itself. This is an another type of a structure which we are looking at it, okay. From this itself we can understand that even in one dimension, we can have some symmetry around the motif, okay, which can repeat itself. But what are types of symmetries which we can have, which can repeat itself, we will see shortly. Before going further, first let us look at periodicity in one dimension. So what I have done it is I had given some more examples here. Okay, one dimensional lattice where I have taken an atom, okay, two types of atoms, one with open circle represents one atom, closed circle represents another atom, okay. Then different ways in which it is getting repeated, okay. This I had just generated so that one can work out and find out what is the lattice parameter, okay, what is the uh, motive which is associated with it, which is repeating itself, all this information one can work out. Now let us uh, look at the symmetry in a lattice, okay. Just if we look at this lattice itself, the first thing which we see it is that uh, there is a translational symmetry which is associated with it. If I move from one point here to an another point here, okay, after the moment it is at an identical position. So in an infinite lattice, we will not be able to make out that we have moved it, correct. So, this symmetry we call it as a translational symmetry. Suppose around this point, 
I just try to rotate it by some particular angle. What will happen? It will come to a position which will be inclined with respect to this, but it is distinct. So it is not coming to a position which is identical with itself. Okay. So then that point here doesn't have any symmetry. Suppose I rotate it around this by 360 degree. It comes back again to original position. Though we have given a 360 degree rotation, okay, the present position and the earlier position, we are not able to distinguish them. That means that this is in mathematical terms, this will be called as something which is invariant. Whatever you do, it remains, the, it appears the same. Okay. And similar to one fold, around this if I give a 180 degree rotation also, then what will happen? It will just come back again to the same position. I can give an 180 degree rotation with respect to midway between the two lattice points. Then again what is going to happen is that 180 degree and this point will be moved to here, this point will be moved to here from one position to another. So essentially again if you look at this as a two-fold symmetry which is associated with it, correct? Okay. So now we can see a two-fold symmetry. Is there any other symmetry which we can see in this pattern? Okay, no? You just see this. What I have done it is here, now I had how this symmetry is represented, a two-fold symmetry is represented with an ellipse. So I had just marked it at this uh, lattice point and another one which comes at in between. Okay. Now you see this, this is a one which is a symbol for uh, showing a mirror. If I put a mirror like this, then this atom position okay, will be getting reflected here and this position gets reflected here. That means they are coming back to identical position. So we can have a mirror passing through the lattice point. Now is there any other position we can put a mirror? like in between if I put it, now you see that it is again getting reflected. Okay. So these are all the two positions we have, one at the lattice point, one in between. Similarly for rotation also, one at the lattice point, one in between, we have a twofold rotation. Okay. So let us consider this particular case which I put a mirror somewhere else in between arbitrarily. Okay. Then if I look at it, then this atom position will be getting reflected from here to here which is not a lattice point and this position will get reflected from here to here which is not a lattice point. So if you put a mirror plane at some position arbitrarily, it doesn't, that means that from this we can understand that once a lattice is fixed, where all we can have the symmetry elements also is decided. We can't have everywhere, anywhere we can put an axis and different points in the lattice will have different type of symmetry. That is apart from this particular one, mirror symmetry we can have it at the lattice point and midway between. Similarly what is true for uh, twofold rotation, in between regions whichever we take it, okay, there is no other symmetry is there. This what I have done it is just taken uh, across uh, from uh, one lattice point to an adjacent lattice point. Here I had shown the various symmetries which are seen. Okay. One is a twofold symmetry that is around each lattice point we have a twofold. We have a, uh, a mirror, twofold rotation and a mirror and then if you look along this if we take a mirror then also it appears to be the same. So that will be there. Okay. Then in addition to it at the center we have a uh, mirror which is uh, uh, generated and similarly a twofold rotation. This is all which we have. We extend the usage of how we talk about in terms of two dimensions and three dimensions unit cell. Then we can call this as from one lattice point to another adjacent lattice point as a unit cell in one dimension. And these are all the symmetry which are can be seen in unit cell in one dimension, correct? Okay, what are the symmetry elements even in this one dimension? Now we have seen in the lattice, there is a translational symmetry, there is an one-fold rotation, there is a two-fold rotation, then we have a reflection. And this rotation, rotational symmetry and reflection symmetry are consistent with the translation because then only the invariance will come. 
correct so just looking at this slide from whatever i have explained i hope you have got some idea about symmetry what symmetries are which we will consider later in detail in two dimensions and three dimensions okay suppose we wanted to construct a crystal what should we do the best way to do it is to put a asymmetric pattern or an atom or a group of atoms around each of these lattice point okay let us do that if you put an atom an asymmetric pattern around each of the lattice point now if we look at it this is becomes a crystal in this crystal okay only one fold rotation is there along x axis y axis as well as z axis okay so this is written as it's a primitive lattice with 1 1 1 okay that is x y and z axis the symmetry and it is represented as p1 now if i take a motif which has got a two fold rotation okay and then i place it around each lattice point now a crystal which has been created now this crystal what is the symmetry which it has it has got a one fold along x axis because if you rotate it by 360 degree only it will come back along y axis again another one fold rotation along the z axis that is perpendicular to a screen we have a two fold rotation right so this is represented as p112 this way and short form which is used as p2 suppose i take a mirror image of this asymmetric motif and make that as a motif and put it around each of the lattice point now we can see that along x direction we have a mirror y direction there is one fold z direction there's only a one fold so now what we have is that pm11 okay so this represents pm suppose we take the same this lattice and put a mirror okay along this lattice uh, direction and then what's going to happen is that every lattice point uh, every motif now we get uh, can see that a mirror image is being formed we assume uh, we consider this to be a motif which repeats itself correct so this if we represent it x direction there is no uh, uh, mirror symmetry only one fold y direction there is a mirror is a direction only a one fold rotation so this is what we represent as p1 m1 okay this is also if you look at the general symbol which is used pm because only one mirror symmetry is there now if you look at it here here what we have done it is this motif which we have taken we have taken a uh, along the lattice uh, plane uh, along the uh, lattice direction we have put a mirror and then when we have created now we can see that we have two mirror planes are there perpendicular to each other and then in along the z direction there is a two fold rotation is also present correct so this is around every lattice point it is there in addition in between also a similar type of a symmetry which gets repeated so the symmetry which it has is now pm m2 or it is generally written as p2m m okay this is how generally it will be written Eh? last one last one okay here if you look at it this is a motif okay around the lattice point i put a mirror along the y direction then all these points get reflected here now i look around each of these can be considered as a motif which is getting repeated itself now i look around each of the lattice point what is the symmetry which is available this p gets two fold rotation it will come here around the z axis this one will get two fold rotation which is going to be there then along this if i put a mirror okay now what i have is that uh, uh, there's a mirror which is there mirror symmetry in this direction also there's a mirror symmetry is there so along x direction 
now we have a mirror y direction there is a mirror z direction there is a two fold so the symmetry which we have is that p m m 2 we write it primitive m m 2 p hmm yeah the lattice when it gets repeated okay the number of lattice points per unit cell if you look at it that's only one because any lattice point if we consider it it corresponds to one as well as the other if i take a lattice as i mentioned at the two adjacent lattice points this point will correspond to this side and on this side this lattice point also got this side and this side 2 into half so the number turns out to be one so it's primitive and generally one should remember at this stage that small p is used to represent primitive in uh, one dimension and two dimension and capital p is used always in three dimension okay it's clear yes. okay let us proceed so so far we have considered all the operations are called as point loop operations correct it's only around a point we have looked at what all the type of symmetry elements okay so these are all the type of five point group symmetries are possible even in one dimension right now let us uh, look can we have any other type of a symmetry which is possible other than this okay for the crystal here what i have done essentially is taken that uh, lattice okay which essentially this particular lattice if i shift the bottom portion by a by 2 then all the atom positions will be coming at in between right bottom portion top portion remains that same that is what exactly which has been done and what is the direction in which it has been done it has been done around the y axis right or i can show that this is around this axis okay a shift has been given and around this axis a mirror image also has been created it is equivalent to i shift this p from here to a by 2 and then take a mirror then this will be created again shift it by a by 2 then take a mirror operation it will come and from this point to this point is where the periodicity is occurring okay this type of uh, symmetry operation we can see it only in lattices not around points so this is called as a glide symmetry okay glide symmetry is one where we have done an operation of a mirror and a translation correct in the other case what we have done is most of the cases where we consider it is we are doing a symmetry operation of a mirror which is consistent with translation so that the structure looks identical whereas here there is a translation which is involved there is a combination where uh, rotation and reflection which is consistent with translation here what we have shown is where we have a mirror plus a translation okay this is the subtle difference between these two similarly the other option which we have is that which doesn't work in one dimension is that okay we can have a rotation and also a translation that will become a screw axis this we will see it only in three dimensional structures not in any other structure okay that will come to later when we talk about three dimensional structures we will mention about that here what we have done it is again as you remember the one which has got the p mm2 okay this is one part of the motif the other part of the motif was here now we have shifted it right when we shift that motif okay by a by 2 then it occupies a position where it's nothing but a glide again is going to be there now we have a mirror in the x direction right and the y direction there is a glide and then we have in between these points we have a two fold rotation is also there so this symmetry is p m b2 is written 
what does b means at this point m denotes mirror okay if there is a glide along a axis it is generally denoted by a letter a on b axis it is written by a symbol b okay so that's why the p m b 2 2 represents the two fold rotation and this is generally rep represented p m p 2 m g g is for glide that is the symbol which is being used but here what we have done we have the detail of glide is along which direction then we have to mention that it's a a glide or a b glide or a c glide so this is details of all the symmetry elements which are there this is a general notation right this we will follow be followed in uh, 2d as well as 3d it is equivalent to three dimension we call space group okay so here we have seven one dimensional space group we can say that okay point groups are five and space groups are seven okay so what are important things which you could uh, uh, which we have studied so far that is even looking at a simple one dimensional lattice and a one dimensional crystal we have got information about the lattice about the motif okay some idea of what motif some definitions we have looked at it. what is a crystal that we have looked at then symmetry what is symmetry okay and then we have seen that around lattice also we have a symmetry there are some symmetries which we can see associated with motif okay because only motifs with these symmetries are consistent with the one dimensional periodicity okay then we have seen uh, point group symmetry because uh, point groups what all the uh, symmetry operations which we have one fold two fold and mirror okay generally point group symmetry is nothing but a combination of these operations one and m is just nothing but mirror two and m is what it turns out to be two mm okay then a two fold then mirror alone can be there so that is how when we look at it we have all these five point group symmetries then when the glide operation comes into it similar to space group symmetry we have uh, in one dimension seven uh, uh, one dimensional symmetry is there one dimensional uh, group whether to call it as uh, because space group you can't use it because one dimension you call it as a space or not if you call it as a space we can say one one dimensional space group okay here i had given some examples of uh, few patterns okay what i want you people to work out is what is the lattice parameter what is the one dimensional lattice which is uh, present on this what is the symmetry which is associated with these designs okay the symmetry of the lattice and the symmetry of these various types of designs okay with this uh, we will stop discussion on one dimensional lattice in fact uh, in one dimensional lattice we can have many other patterns like we have taken an asymmetric pattern as a dark p which is a dark uh, written in dark we can write it in red then if we put them together then there are many types of patterns which can be generated where these patterns become important not only in crystallography if you look at the tiling of the floor okay architecture everywhere symmetry is a concept which is very important okay symmetry actually lowers okay that the higher the symmetry the lower the or the stabler the uh, in stable situation in which the system remains okay now in the next class we will talk about uh, uh, 2d lattice okay